ba ha yan da ho yan da hia ba yan da to ha yan da ho da 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 ya da 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 ho ba hia ha yan da ho hia hia ya 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 ma ha na do ho ma ya hia ha yan do ho ha ya 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 ba ha ya 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 ma Ha ya do ho ya do do ho he. Today is the day that we will rejoice because the Lord has made it. I am at Coleman Lake in Sulphur Springs, Texas, the United States of America, and it is the um, today is the Saturday. And I believe it's either the 12th of October, 2019. And right now, I just wanted to show you where I am. And I tried to go live, but as usual... Um, whenever you're in an area of trees and stuff, the signal kind of is bad. So, this is just going to be a very quick word. But today, the Lord, the Lord, Jesus Christ, is your Savior, and He is mine. And I am decreeing and I'm declaring that over you today. And how do you get Him to be your Savior? Well, it says in Romans 10 that if you believe that he went to the cross for you genuinely with faith, then you are saved. However, the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you and you, it's like a nudging in your spirit and you feel convicted and you feel guilty. Well, you don't have to feel guilty of your sins anymore. Because Jesus Christ went to the cross for you so that you can be saved. So that you can be saved. But whenever you're saved, you work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And when I look at this water... I'm remembering this scripture in Revelation. And we'll get to Psalm. And if you remember, I read this a few days ago. So, the point that I'm trying to make here is that I have been on Revelation 22, verses 1 through 2. And sometimes... I don't want to tear my Bible. Sometimes. I like to travel. And I like to go to different locations. So that you all can have a visual reference. To put in your imagination. Of what John the Revelator saw. And if you remember. About a few weeks ago. No, not a few weeks ago. About um, a couple of days ago in the last few videos that I've done and I was in Commerce, Texas. I had talked about the tree of life. Okay? And I had talked about out of uh, Proverbs 11 verse 30. That the ones, the people that win souls are the trees of life. And the reason that they're the trees of life is because of Jesus Christ. For he is the vine and we are the branches that produce righteous fruit. Because a soul in the kingdom of heaven and those people work out their salvation with fear and trembling. That means that they are saved from the clutches of the enemy from the lake of fire which people call hell all right that's my friend over there um i rode up here with her but 
point being in verse in 20 in chapter 22 of Revelation verse 1 and he showed me a pure river so I'm out here and the river is the water of life clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb so whenever you see this lake whenever you see the water it's clear and then right over there just you see all of this water coming out and then whenever you hit verse 2 in the midst of the street of it and on the other on the either side of the river was there the tree of life which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations so to make the reference point right here let's say this tree and see how many leaves are on this tree now when I've been in heaven with the trees what I remember about all of them is what you're seeing right now is that these trees and the leaves are dying because these trees are going into hibernation for the fall and for the winter and then next spring they're going to sprout up new leaves well in heaven when leaves fall from those trees it's like what I remember seeing is yes they fall but nothing dies nothing dies when I walk on the grass over here the grass sprouts back up nothing dies everything lives and everything is as clear as crystal so basically what I'm saying is you don't have to die to go to heaven. You don't have to die to go to heaven. What I'm talking to you about today, what God would, wanted me to remind you of, is that you can have a personal relationship with the Lord. Because it's not about religion. It's about a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus Christ. But the more that you get to know Jesus Christ, for your own personal Lord and Savior for yourself. The Lord teaches you who He is. Then He teaches you who you are in Him. And then He teaches you that you have a destiny, calling, and a purpose. Then you link up. You link up with other like-minded believers such as yourself. And that's where the relationship starts because it says in the word not to neglect fellowshipping with one another because we are the mouthpieces for the Lord. We are what the Lord uses to spread his word, to spread his gospel. Okay? So sometimes it could be something as simple as going up to somebody and just encouraging them. And I know that a lot of things I've been repeating myself on. But when I post these videos, these are for a lot of the people, quite frankly, who don't know how to get to the Lord. And when they say, tree of life, what are you talking about? Well, if you look at the Revelations, the book of Revelation, not Revelations. It's John the Revelator where he was taken up into different places by the Spirit of the Lord through different circumstances. And he was shown many things. A lot of people try to analyze it and a lot of it they're not right about. However, when I read the book of Re the Revelation, the Re book of Revelation, I just read it and ask God what He has for me. 
and it's like I'm just reading a novel. But it is the word of the Lord. It is what happened. It's like a, a journal. You know, whenever you write it into a journal and you write what happens in the diary, basically, um, what the Lord told him to do was to record everything, to write it down. It's basically a recording of John's experiences with the Lord. And that's basically what the book of Revelation is about. And that in the book of Daniel, it's the same thing. Daniel has these visions. He's shown different things. And Angel Gabriel, God through Angel Gabriel, the messenger angel, explains things to him. So basically, it's like these are prophets. These are men of God. But they had a very close, one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus Christ. And I say Jesus Christ because to the Gentiles, he is Jesus Christ. When he was alive at the beginning of the New Testament of the Bible of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, he was Jesus Christ. Now, in the Old Testament with Daniel, he was just known as the Lord Almighty, and I'm speaking English on that one. And that was before humans ever knew of the, of the existence of Jesus Christ. Now, a few prophets knew that he was, that the Lord was going to step out of eternity into time. And that's in Isaiah 11. Isaiah 9 and Isaiah 11. The Lord told Isaiah, he too was taken up. And if you go to Isaiah 6, that's the most famous one right there. Okay? Because I've got a Bible in my hands, so give me just a second here. Alright, we've got Ezekiel, Solomon, Proverbs. Alright, here we go. And basically, the way that Isaiah lived his life is... This is just really neat. Is yes, there were, yes, he was taken up. He was at the throne of grace. Okay? And I'll show you in Isaiah 6. Alright? And it goes like this in Isaiah 6, verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar and he laid it upon my mouth and said lo this hath touched thy lips and thine iniquity is taken away and in thy sin purged also I heard the voice of the Lord saying whom shall I send whom will go for us to 
he was asking Isaiah, who will he send? Who will go? And this is what Isaiah says. <clears throat> Here am I. Send me. So in that point right there, is that when you're commissioned, that's the commission right there for Isaiah. So he was taken up. And he was shown the throne. Okay. So a lot of people. But the point that I'm trying to make. Is that even the people of the Old Testament. Yes they were scared. Yes they were human. Yes their lives were not perfect point being even with David when all was lost they knew how to go to the Lord because when you can get that one on one relationship with the, with the son of God whom is God and you start to build your relationship with him. Out of Jeremiah 33. The Lord will show you great and mighty things. And all you got to do is ask him. But he will also commission you. Like he did Isaiah. Because if you remember in one of the verses. Where he said whom shall we send. And when Isaiah said send me. Send me. Send me. Well, he had to get his sins forgiven so that he could be sent. But let me tell you something. This walk with the Lord is not an easy road because you're going to go through some stuff. But in the end, if you choose this life, and you choose to accept your destiny and your calling and your purpose, in the end, in the end, it takes time. It takes time to be trained right, even by the Lord. Even when the Lord sends you into different places. And you're going to go through some stuff. And God is going to have to refine you. I'm, I'm not lying to you. I've had to go through a lot of stuff. And I'm still going through it. I'm at a place now where I can honestly say that I am. Like that water. At peace and content. But even in that. Even in that. You know how you really prosper. And whenever you have a successful journey in life. Is when you know that you know that you know when the Lord says something to you and you know that it's his voice and you believe it and you stand on his word and I mean you stand on it no matter how long it takes then you start reaping the fruit that's my friend is how you know that you're having a successful journey in life because going to getting to know the Lord getting to know the Lord and that's where it starts is getting to know Jesus Christ for yourself one on one when you believe with your heart that Jesus died on the cross for you and shed his blood at Calvary, then you're saved and he forgives you of your sins. That's where it starts, is that salvation. But once you get into him, you get to know him. And I just showed you, and I read a couple of examples and a couple of verses, that you can live 
the word because we are living Bibles. We are living Bibles. Okay, I'm going to say it again. I have the word in me. I have the word in me because that word comes alive to the point that your spirit starts coming forward and your soul submits to your spirit out of Hebrews 4.12 because the word of the Lord is more powerful than a two-edged sword to the dividing asunder of the marrow and the joint and the soul and the spirit. That way when your spirit and your soul separate and your soul goes back into your flesh as your flesh is in your subjection, your spirit man is leading but the Holy Spirit is ahead of that. And with the Holy Spirit being ahead of that, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my friend, you're taking in the word of life. The Logos is the dead word that becomes the Rima, the alive word. Two Greek words. And that's how you know that you know you're having a successful journey is when you know that your life and your content where you are, whether you are abound or you are abased, just like Paul was. Even if your outer circumstances doesn't look like that you're having a successful journey, but it's that peace out of 1427, John 1427, that Jesus gives you. And whenever you have peace and you just know that you know that God is providing, then my friend, you're having a successful journey in the Lord. I love you and God bless you. I'll give you one last look at this. And that is the river of life. And just imagine that as being the tree of life. Out of Revelation 22, verses 1 through 2. I have more revelation on that. And later on, I will actually go live and teach on that. Okay? I love you. God bless you. And bye-bye.